So we've talked about the quantum mechanical model of the atom. We got our 1s, we got our 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, etc., etc., etc. And what I want to do for a little bit today is I want to talk about um, how s's and p's and d's are different from one another. And so we're going to start with, um, we're going to go to a place that will show us a lot of these kinds of uh, calculations. If we, if you just go to any kind of search engine and type the word orbitron, O-R-B-I-T-R-O-N, one of the first things that will come up, the second thing that comes up here is the orbitron, a gallery of atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals. If we click on that, uh, this is going to show us uh, various kinds of sublevels and orbitals and things like that. So if I click on 1s, it's going to show me what a 1s orbital looks like, and what is that going to look like? Kids, for those of you playing along at home, what? It's not going to show us, by the way, it's not going to show us the boxes. This is just our kind of diagram of how we keep track of things. The actual physical shape of what the 90% cloud of probability is, that's what we're going to see. And for a 1s, uh, for that energy state, what is it? Do you remember? It's a sphere, that's right. So we click on that, we'll see a sphere here, and there's a little cross-section of the sphere. And uh, and so, uh, then if we click on 2s, we'll see a 2s orbital, which is slightly bigger. They do get bigger as you go up energy levels. However, on this particular uh, site, they kind of scale their pictures so they all look roughly the same size. Uh, the one difference you'll see on this guy than the last guy is that that last guy, the 1s, see this little red part here in the middle? The 1s didn't have that. Uh, it was just kind of the same all the way through, whereas in the 2s, you do get a little distinction there. And the, the reason is, if you think back to the spring, whenever I, we slung the spring in higher, higher energy, we got those nodes, those places in the middles where nothing was happening. This is actually, you're seeing a little node here, this little empty shell around the red there is a node. So just be aware that you will see nodes on this. Uh, if I ever ask you to draw something, I will not ask you to keep show the nodes. Now, do you remember what the P orbitals look like? They kind of look like an infinity sign. So I'm going to click on that. Now, how many orbitals should we see? If we go back here, how many orbitals should you see when you click on a P? You should see three, shouldn't you? So if we go back here, we click on that, we'll see, hopefully. There we go, three orbitals. And the three orbitals, they're the little dumbbells, little inf infinity sign, just like we said. And the only uh, difference between the three of them is what? The directions, exactly. The directions are different. So um, the way we do this, if you remember from math class, how you have a graph and you'll have an x-axis that's horizontal and a y-axis that's vertical. Um, and then that, that's for things that are flat. For things that are three-dimensional, you need a third axis, which we call the z-axis. So on here, you can see the x is uh, horizontal here, and the y is kind of in and out of the board, and the z is vertical. So um, so we actually give these guys names. This one on the left that's oriented along the z-axis is called PZ. This one in the middle that's oriented along the x-axis is PX. And this one that's going in and out of the board along the y-axis is PY. And so we know there are three P orbitals, and that's actually that's what their names are, PX, PY, and PZ. And the only difference between them is how they're oriented in space. So if we go to the third floor, you'll see uh, here's our 3s, and it's got more nodes like you'd expect. We go to 3p, it looks a lot like what we just saw, except I believe we're going to start getting some nodes here. <coughs> um, so again, there's your, uh, they've changed the color scheme here, but other than that, the picture is pretty similar to what we just saw. Now, what should we see if we click on the 3d? How many should we see? How many orbitals? We should see five. And so if we do that. Um, click on there and we get five and there we go those are the five um, oh, I should have asked but I didn't uh, this is actually new I showed you the S's and P's before these are new what what happens almost every time 
uh, is you kind of double up what you had. You had a sphere first, and then you had a kind of a double sphere, kind of an infinity sign, and now we have double that, and so instead of having a p orbital, you have kind of like two different p orbitals overlapped in one space, and so that's your, that's your, these are your d orbitals. Now four of the five, this one, this one, this one, this one, are identical shape, kind of egg-shaped things, four, four, almost like four leaf clover, clovers. Uh, and they're, again, just like the P, the only difference is how they're oriented. However, there is a fifth kind that's kind of its own little different thing. You see this guy on the top right over here? That one is, uh, it's the fifth D orbital, and uh, a lot of these labels I will not have you learn or bother with. They're labeled by what plane they are in, but we don't need to worry about all that. Uh, I would like you to know the name of this one, though, simply because it's my favorite. It's my favorite because it look, looks, looks kind of like a P orbital with a donut in the middle, and I really enjoy donuts. And so, for that reason, it's my favorite. So that is the DZ squared orbital, which uh, you might know the name of just to be super awesome and cool. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, they're all kind of the same shape, these little four-leaf clovers. Now, if we go to the uh, fourth floor, we'll get to our S, we'll get to our uh, P, there's three, three P orbitals, our five D orbitals on the 4D, and there they are, and you can see those are kind of similar to what we just saw, except now we get more nodes. They get more complicated because they have more gaps in between them and stuff. Uh, again, I would never have you draw these with the nodes. But uh, what's the 4F? What's an F going to look like if the pattern holds? Yeah, it's going to be like eight lobes. Um, and so if we click on a 4F, most of them are going to be uh, these kind of D orbitals kind of duplicated. So there's eight of them here, eight, 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 oriented differently in space. However, uh, up here, three of the eight of the seven are kind of like the DZ squared, only with double donuts now. Now, again, you're not responsible for drawing. I would have you draw a D orbital on a test. I would never have you draw an F orbital on a test. At some point, it just becomes pretty uh, challenging just to draw. Um, but uh, there is your seven. Now, that's where we stop for the most part. However, if you want to look at the uh, uh, G orbitals, these are the ones that are so high energy that they would never actually get filled. They get pretty interesting uh, and get all sorts of cool patterns. What's more interesting than this is to actually uh, make them in a viewer and kind of go in and physically rotate them around and look at them from different angles, but we won't get into all that. Again, this is a video that's probably not worth watching. You probably just want to... Uh, actually go to the Orbitron and click on these things yourself and look at them yourself. But that's 